Hey, so in this video I'm going to show you how to install Fedora Server 23. Uh, 20, Server 23 is the latest version that's out right now. It actually came out today, um, but uh, Fedora Server 22 is good as well. What I really like about this, uh, this Linux server uh, distro is that even if you don't know Linux, um, you still have the ability to monitor um, your server, uh, RAM usage, CPU usage, network, uh, you can spin up Docker containers, you can uh, uh, shut down Docker containers, delete them, um, and download Docker images. Um, it's, so I mean, like, it's, it's really cool, but if you, if you know what enough Linux just to, you know, um, navigate the file system, you still have access to the terminal inside of the web portal. Um, and just installing the server doesn't require any advanced Linux knowledge. You just need to know how to click next, 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 and type in a password. Um, but you might need to know um, some server knowledge, network knowledge. Like, you know, if you need a network file server or something like that, you need to know what, it, what an NFS is and um, uh, DHCP and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, it's not going to be easy for somebody that knows nothing about servers to set up. You at least need to know what a server is and different server technologies and network technologies to do this. But even if you're, you know, a Windows only guy, you can get up and running with a uh, Fedora server pretty quickly and uh, at least um, monitor it pretty easily. Um, so I already booted up uh, the ISO. Now I'm going to start up the uh, Fedora installation now. And so I'm just going to press escape there so it doesn't continue checking uh, the ISO. Uh, so at this point, just wait a second. Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer when it sits on that screen. Um, but I'm inside of a virtual machine, so it's probably going to run a little bit slower. So at this screen, you can go ahead and pick whatever language you want. I speak English, so I'm going to continue on. Um, this is the keyboard configuration language, of course, date, time, you can change that if you want. Um, installation source, keep that the same. You can go over to software selection and Fedora servers, uh, the default. If you want to set up a web server, you can set up your, uh, you can click here. This is install, this will install uh, the needed um, um, packages on your server to do what it is that you plan to do with the server. So I'm, this isn't going to be a web server, so I'm not going to install that. And it's not going to be a DNS server. Um, I'm going to install guest agents because uh, this is under a hypervisor. This is all hypervised. Um, I want um, do, 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 what else do I want? I want container management. So I'll install the tools for that. I want headless management. So it'll give me a graphical console so that we can uh, manage the server. And I feel like I'm missing something. Probably forgetting something. See, I'm at container management because I wanted to show you Docker as well. I think that's it. Mm. Okay, I think that's all. Then you're gonna say done at the top. Uh, automatic partitioning selected. Uh, so you just wanna click here, make sure everything's good. Uh, say done, and then once you've select, it's already pre-selected. Um, you just need to say done to confirm it. Um, you can go into here and you can set the host name for your server. It's gonna be test server. You can configure uh, IP address information if you want. And then we're going to begin installation. At this point, you're going to set your root password. And you're going to set your user. Make it an administrator if you want it to be. And then just wait for the installation to complete.
All right, so that's it. All you have to do now is pop the disk out and reboot. And in the next video, I'll show you how to access the web portal of your server. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and reboot. I'll pop that disk out. And because uh, you'll need to uh, get the IP address for your server and then access the web portal, which is port 9090 or HTTPS. Give it a sec and that, there we go. Your IP address is right there and it's over port 9090. So in the next video, I'll show, to show you how to access and manage that. Well, manage and monitor. All right, so at this point, I accessed the uh, server via HTTPS over port 9090. Uh, it's a self-signed cert, so you're going to be uh, prompted with this if you're using Firefox or uh, Chrome or whatever. Um, so as you can see, that's our uh, domain, uh, our uh, host name right there. It's a nice, it looks pretty nicely laid out with this uh, web login screen. It looks kind of like a, a Dell um, uh, IDRAC, or I forgot what it's called. It's a Dell um, web portal for managing your um, server. But you can go ahead and type in your username and password that you set. And here you can see the host name. You can set a pretty uh, host name. I've never done that in the real host name. I think the pretty host name is just for the, um, the web management. And you have your CPU utilization. I only put two gigs of RAM, I think, in uh, the server. And um, your network traffic and your disk IO, which is really, really cool. So all these graphs right here, ready for you to view. Uh, makes it really really easy to monitor your server um, although it doesn't scale if you have you know hundreds of servers so you'll probably need a, another piece of software to collect all that information and throw it into graphs um, uh, some type of unified software um, but you can manage power options sh uh, shut down and start up um, it's pretty cool I like how it has the asset tag there so if you have a Dell server or any other kind of server that has asset tag information for you to manage your <clears throat> for you to manage your um, your inventory it's all right here ready for you to uh, view you can view all the services um, it's, it's pretty cool I mean it, it adds it adds a nice little feature so even if you aren't familiar with uh, Linux um, you can still manage you can do a little bit of management especially with the docker containers and you can do a lot of monitoring and you can start up docker uh, because by default um, I don't think system CTL um, you'll have to go into the terminal and do a system CTL enable docker uh, in order for it to start docker when the machine starts up so you can get a new image we're gonna grab an Ubuntu image you don't have to press anything it'll just search after you're done typing, say Ubuntu, say download, it's going to go out and download uh, your uh, uh, Docker image. And you have your space up here so you can monitor that. Let's give it a second for it to download. All right, cool. So it's downloaded. You can click on the Docker um, image and you can delete or run. We're not going to do that. We're going to go back containers. We're going to press play and the container name is going to be test we're just going to name it that we're going to limit you can limit the memory you can give it as, as much memory as you want um, you can set the cpu priority um, you can link it to another container which we don't have any other containers so we don't have to worry about that um, and you can do a uh, port forwarding and stuff like that so we're going to run and it's running right now so you can go ahead and click on it and right here you have the terminal and it even has network access and you can change the resource limits um, you have uh, you can stop it here and then you can commit it and then make a new docker image out of what you just changed so if you um, set up a docker image and added some software that you wanted to use basically as like a template you can commit the changes and then spin up the uh, Docker images, or Docker containers uh, off that image and it'll be exactly how you had it set up. We're gonna delete that, take us back here and you can monitor all that stuff from here. You can spin up hundreds of containers if your hardware can support it. Here you can access the logs, which is also really nice. Um, it 
it's really really useful if you don't have the skills to go in and uh, CD to var log and look at the logs there um, you can look at all the logs I guess it's very very noisy if you want to do it that way you can go into the storage and look at um, um, monitor your storage your disks <clears throat> your disks um, this is the hard drive and this is our CD-ROM drive it, I mean it does a really really good job it will even tell you live read write speeds um, and you can create yeah you can create your rays and your volume groups and it'll give you the uh, the the partitions the file systems right here so I mean if you don't know how to do a DF dash H or F disk dash L to look at your file systems and we only have one volume group if you click on that you can see what's a part of the volume group so you can do your formats and I mean we're not gonna format swap even though uh, typically my machines have enough RAM where it doesn't need swap but it I mean it adds a lot of uh, resources for you to do a lot of monitoring of your server and a pretty nice amount of managing of your server um, and here's the network and you can look at the read write you can add VLANs uh, if your uh, switch has uh, 802.11x um, if, if your if the port that your server is plugged into has is on uh, trunk has trunking turned on <laughs> and you can bridge um, yeah really 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 cool um, there's not that many tools but one of the, if you know Linux enough to you know update it in the terminal and do which I also noticed that I don't think there's a way to update the server through here you'll probably just have to go into terminal and sudo and then this is running DNF this isn't yum anymore if you do a yum it'll just um, I think that's just an alias to DNF so you have to do a DNF update so I mean, if you're used to a um, a Ubuntu server, you're not going to do apt-get update and an apt-get upgrade or apt-get upgrade or whatever. You just do DNF update, and that's the equivalent of doing a apt-get update and and apt-get upgrade. So it's just one command goes out and does a what it's doing is it's doing two things. DNF has a command for DNF make cache, which will, which is the equivalent of DNF update, which will update the cache uh, of the uh, packages on your repositories, and it'll do the DNF upgrade, which is the apt-get upgrade um, equivalent. So I'm not going to do this now. Probably do that later. And I mean, I'm not. This isn't running Java or anything like that. Uh, I don't think. No, I don't have Flash installed on this machine. It just it just works. Uh, I'm not sure how they're doing it. I think they might be doing this HTML5 or something. Uh, this is on Firefox version 42. So let me make sure. About yeah, oh 41. Okay, so I'm not on 42, but the which is the latest as of today. But 41, it works. Um, you can manage admin accounts. You can add more admin accounts if you want. Um, well, I mean, you can administer accounts. Um, so, I mean, like, this is a really, really cool. That's cool. You can authorize public SSH keys. So, somebody can. So, if you have a, a, a user that wants to be able to SSH into the server, you don't want to give them a password or anything like that. You just have them generate a do an SSH uh, dash keygen and generate some SSH keys. They give you the public key. You upload the public key to this account, and then they can SSH the username that you want them to use at the server address, and that'll authenticate them without typing in a password. So this is all pretty cool. Um, I might play around with this some more. I, I still stick to Ubuntu servers right now, but I mean, this just this web portal looks really, really cool enough for me to maybe think about switching over to Fedora server uh, instead of uh, Ubuntu server. But a lot more applications would have to support, which 
there's a lot of applications that support RPMs, but even more applications support uh, deb files and Ubuntu server, like my Plex media server. I don't know off the top of my head if that even supports, you know, I think it supports CentOS. So I might be able to install the, uh, the CentOS RPM file into Fedora and be able to monitor my server through this gateway because it's a really, really nice laid out uh, web portal for managing your, uh, your Linux server. You might be able to run this on other Linux distros. I'm not exactly sure, but you know, I, I think I looked at their GitHub page and it didn't support other Linux distros, or maybe you have to uh, get clone or get pull and uh, compile the uh, software that's doing this. But I, I might consider moving over to a Fedora server just for this. And uh, I, I like Fedora. Uh, I use Fedora as my main Linux desktop and it's done me right so far. I like uh, the Red Hat backing of it. But this is uh, just to get you uh, up and running with the Fedora, Fedora server and uh, how to install and manage it. I hope you learned something new in this video and thank